Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod Sanyas classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs for 22nd February 2022. In this lecture, we are going to see seven topics which are very much relevant from our UPSC point of view. So let's get started with our discussion and let us see a small introduction regarding the topics. Now we are going to have our discussion so that you will be getting some clarity. Okay, I will be also explaining you how we can link that source of topic with our GS subjects as well. So first topic is about corporate governance. Actually from last 10 days onwards here there is one important news uh, that is regarding the data. Okay, one person who is mainly influenced. Okay. Okay, so this topic we can connect with right to privacy also that will come under our polity and even you can know some facts regarding this corporate governance. So what is this corporate governance and what is the definition of this corporate governance and you need to also know what are the weaknesses regarding this corporate governance and what is the way forward. So in these dimensions, you can think about this topic and this topic is very much important from your means. And next topic it is regarding use of international law, call out China's violations. So already we are seeing a military standoff across this LAC line of actual control between India and China. That is since March 2020 onwards, okay, April, May 2020 onwards. There has been standoff that is mainly seen and we went for several rounds of talks between India and China but there is no proper and complete disengagement and status quo in this line of actual control. Actually this article which is mainly saying that yes Chinese came up with some violation of agreement and this article which is mainly focusing on the agreements what they are saying and how China violated that agreements. Okay, and even this article which mainly gave an insight regarding how global laws are also violated by this China. So this is a very very important article and this is a very interesting article actually. And next topic is about questions on MG Narega budget estimation. So this is about uh, MG Narega. So what is this MG Narega? That is Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. So in this act which mainly says that 100 days of uh, compulsory employment or guarantee employment that is given for the rural areas right and what happened recently in this budget the allocation for this engineer had been decreased okay so here this is the topic and already we discussed about this engineer in our budget session also and this topic is once again important from our polity point of view which mainly comes in the GS paper too and even we can connect this topic uh, regarding economy and the government schemes okay and that mainly comes in the GS paper 3 as well. And next topic is about fundamental duties. Fundamental duties must be enforced. Actually a petition which is mainly filed regarding this. We need to enforce this fundamental right, duties. Okay. So this is very important from our polity point of view. And you need to know what is the background. So if you are talking about background. Our prime minister who gave one controversial statement that. We are focusing on rights because of that our duties. Uh, we are not uh, focusing on the duties just we are, we are mainly focusing on the rights so because of this it is a one of the important reason for the backward so this is the one important uh, statement that is a very controversial statement that mainly given by our prime minister i think in the last month and we discussed number of articles regarding fundamental rights and the duties okay which appeared in the editorials again now there is one petition which mainly filed regarding this fundamental duties now again we need to focus on this fundamental duties once again and next topic is about India France discuss Afghanistan Ukraine crisis. So this article which is mainly talking about India France relations and this topic is important from our international relations and here whenever you are getting any articles regarding India with other countries you need to open your map because there are high possibility of getting map related questions in your UPSC prelims. Okay and next topic it is about NEP national education policy. So our union budget will help in implementing this national education policy. So this is a statement which is mainly given by our prime minister. And here we need to focus on this NEP and here we need to know about actually the university, national digital university. That is the thing which mainly highlighted in this article. And this is important from our education once again. And next topic is about Corbe box. Okay, Corbe wax. 
it is a one covid 19 vaccine now this corvey works uh, which mainly got emergency use authorization and it can be now used between the age group of 12 to 18 years and here this topic is important from science and technology where we can study about vaccines mechanism of action of the vaccines etc and even we can connect this topic with our health as well okay so these are the topics now we are going to have our discussion now let us try to see the quote okay so this quote it is a motivation quote so just uh, whenever i am discussing the quotes when we are discussing only the quotes regarding education empowerment society artificial intelligence i thought that why can't we give the quotations of for motivation also because prelims is very very soon and many students already have applied okay applied and after once notification is out what happened depression anxiety in the students will be raised because the same thing I, I used to fail when I was in my preparation okay so I thought that why can't I come up with this motivational course also so for some days we are also having some motivational course so this will be also useful in our philosophical essays as well right so if you see this quote it mainly says that write it on your heart that every day is best day in the year okay so one thing I want to say here is uh, before sleeping okay I think you will be going to bed by 10 30 or by 11 o'clock in the night so after after you enter into your bed okay so just close your eyes for two to three minutes and recall what you read in that day and for next one minute you have to think what you have to read in the next day such that what will be happen then you will be getting satisfaction like so i completed so and so topics today and tomorrow i have to start my day with so and so topics such that that will be helpful to motivate you so whenever uh, when whenever if you are demotivating on any day and on that day you have did nothing means on that day you will be feeling like no i didn't uh, did anything so in tomorrow's uh, tomorrow uh, in tomorrow i have to study so and so topics such that it will be like a motivating for you okay so this code is very very useful for ups aspirant that is write it on your heart that every day is the best day okay write it on your heart that every day is the best day in the year <clears throat> so you have to say yes today I have to do 100% because just three months is there for prelims and this is the time for revision whatever you have studied you have to revise and how many test papers that are available in the market try to attempt at least one test paper every day such that the clearing of UPSC prelims will be having maximum chances okay so now let us try to see the first topic is regarding corporate governance so title says a red pen moment for corporate governance okay a red pen moment for corporate governance here we are mainly focusing on this corporate governance so what is the issue that is NSE that is national stock exchange or we can say like Bombay stock exchange so in this Bombay stock exchange there was a one allegation that who was the vice uh, chairman okay head of this NSE and whatever the policies of this organization were done they were under influence of one Himalayan uh, Himalayan yogi okay and there was also some leak of information that is uh, mainly happened okay so this is the one allegation that is mainly seen and this is the thing which is mainly investigating by sebi as well okay sebi mainly said that yes there was some influence of a himalayan yogi that is seen and the details of that himalayan yogi it is not at uh, released okay it is not at found till now okay so because of this we need to understand what is this corporate governance and what are the issues regarding this corporate governance and what is the way forward and we need to know what are the uh, what are the pillars of this uh, corporate governance and access principles also because this year means you can get a question regarding this corporate governance as you all know that this uh, sensex or uh, we can talk about this national stock exchange is one of the important thing okay if there is any data breach that is happening in this nsc means it will be also have some impact on uh, right to privacy of the people right so it is a very very big issue actually so now let's try to see this topic in a very great detail so over past 10 days so what is the context over past 10 days the elevations about the elevations about the functioning of national stock exchange is also called as bombay stock exchange during the tenure of chitra ramakrishna so whenever this chitra ramakrishna worked as managing director of this uh, nsc national stock exchange what happened there was uh, some influence of himalayan yogi that is seen on the functions of this nsc 
and even there is allegation that there was some data breach also happened so if we're talking about what is this corporate governance so what is the meaning of this corporate governance so whenever you are writing answer regarding this corporate governance you have to give the definition and that definition is to be like authenticated definition so you can say like according to oecd that is organization for economic and cooperation economic cooperation and development that is oecd according to oecd it mainly defines corporate governance as procedures and processes according to which the organization is directed and controlled so what is this corporate governance so according to this oecd which mainly defines this corporate governance as so what are the procedures what are the processes according to which the functioning of that organization is happening that is called as corporate governance so in this way i can define this corporate governance in a very layman terms like it is a way a corporation is governed and managed okay corporate governance is nothing but the way a corporation is governed and as well as managed so that is called as corporate governance so now let us look after this infographic so it mainly talks about principles of corporate governance so if we're talking about principles the first one is so what whoever the stakeholders are involved so they need to focus on sustainable development sustainable development of all stakeholders and next one is they need to go for effective management of that corporation and they need to focus on distribution of wealth as well and they need to follow the social responsibility as well for example if any corporation or any industry or any factory which is crossing the limits of a profit and they need to spend at least 2 percentage as corporate social responsibility for example they need to spend in education or sanitation etc okay so this is the one thing that is to be followed by this corporate governance and even they need to follow best management practices and they need to follow law in letter and as well as spirit okay they should not only follow the law in letter but even they have to follow that and next one is they need to adhere to ethical standards as well so these are the some important principles of this corporate governance and if we are talking about four fundamental pillars okay four fundamental pillars of this uh, corporate governance are first one is they need to accountable okay accountability and they need to transparent okay and they need to responsible for the actions that are done by it and even fairness so these are the four fundamental principles of this corporate governance so you have to remember this and if you are focusing on the what are the weaknesses of this corporate governance so first one is we can see there is a concentration of power that is seen so we are talking about especially ownership of corporations in india so these ownership which is mainly held in the few hands and we will be having normally a single shareholder or only certain group of families okay only a family which mainly controls a large group of uh, companies so this is the one important issue that we are facing so because whenever there is a concentration of power that is happening that is centralization of power in few hands that means there is only one shareholder or whenever uh, whenever a family which is mainly maintaining that so and so corporation then what happened there will be the poor decision making so they will be only consulting their family members but not they will be taking other shareholders so because there is only single single shareholder for example if there is any company which is mainly having like 10 to 15 shareholders means they will be having group discussions and meetings will be there so in this meeting what happened there is a sharing of ideas and finally after the ideas are given they will be coming up with adopting of best idea about here in this uh, concentration of power there will be a single stare holder and a single family which is mainly holding this corporation means there is no proper decision making that mainly happens okay so in this way it will mainly harm the profit of that company so this is the first important weakness and next one is board of directors okay so independent directors they were supposed to be the biggest corporate governance reform so what happen if you are talking about board of directors normally this corporates are having concentration of power what happen there will be no independent uh, directors are present so this is one important reform which is mainly recommended okay in this corporate governance and next one is there is no proper structure and even in india if you are talking about this corporate governance which has no proper structure or we do not have a proper design okay so this is one important challenge that is we are facing and there is also lack of awareness about the various issues 
okay like what are the rules and regulations that we need to follow and what are the roles and reg uh, roles and uh, responsibilities of this board of directors and as well as uh, what are the shareholder rights so there is no proper governance in this corporate governance okay so because of all these issues we are seeing there is a very very poor governance and finally it will impact the working of companies and they will enter into the losses and next one is so what are the rules and regulations they need to follow actually because of lack of awareness so these rules and regulations they will be not followed by this corporates okay so this is also one important challenge and what is the way forward what can be done so the first one is we need to make awareness regarding the responsibilities of the board okay so now corporate governance they need to ensure that effective monitoring will be there okay effective monitoring by the board and even board's accountability to the company and as well as shareholders who are the directors or there or who are the shareholders or there so whatever the actions that are taking by the so and so board they need to be accountable they need to be transparent and next one is we need to go for performance evaluation okay so what is this performance evaluation that means what are the privileges what are the compensation of this executive directors they should be based on the objective performance evaluation process and who will do this uh, evaluation that will be done by the board and next one is we need to have enhanced objectivity as well okay we need to have enhanced objectivity and next one is the relation with the shareholders so what are the board is there is present okay is there in so and so corporation so they need to be responsible for ensuring that appropriate uh, things or appropriate dialogues that are mainly take place among the organization and even with its stakeholders so we need to ensure that proper equitable uh, treatment of all shareholders is done and even we can include minority and as well as foreign shareholders and all should be the equal and next one is we need to go for effective internal audit function as well we need to go for proper audit so that means nothing but whenever in whenever whenever there is any funds that we are getting and how much amount it is used and what's the profit so that means nothing but accounts so we need to see the accounts of that so and so corporation and next one is financial transparency is very very important so the corporate governance framework should ensure that there is a timely and accurate disclosure it is made regarding all material matters for example matters regarding to the corporation even financial situation of that so and so corporation so how it is performing and even ownership okay so and governance of the company so we need to be transparent okay so this is about this topic that is corporate governance and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding india china relations title c is that use international law call out china's violation so what happened across this china india border at this lac line of actual control since 2020 april may onwards there is military stand up that is happening okay and we went for 14 different rounds of talks between india and china but there is no proper disengagement till now till now there are some areas we need to go for de escalation like hot spring area dipsang plains etc and there are also some patrolling points that is uh, still need en disengagement right so this are uh, this article which is mainly talking about which are the agreements which are present and how china it is violating those agreements and even how it went for weaponizing of global law so those are the things which are given in this article very very nicely and i personally like this article very much and if you read this article then you will be getting some points to write about what are the uh, relations between india and china going to alter like that okay so if you see the uh, introduction which mainly says that during the recent meeting okay so recently we saw that quad meeting which mainly held in this australia in melbourne okay in melbourne city recently quad summit uh, that is fourth ministerial meet of this quad recently held so this quad contains four countries that is usa japan australia and india so these are the four countries which are mainly part of this quad and recently fourth ministerial meeting of this quad which mainly held in australia in melbourne city already we discussed that topic i think if you are following our current affairs daily you will be recalling this thing okay during the recent meeting of foreign ministers of quad lateral dialogue or quad india's external affairs minister he said that the situation across this line of actual control as arisen due to the disregard by the china of written agreements 
so already we know that there are many agreements which are, which are mainly written between india and china to maintain the peace and stability across the border but what happened these agreements which are mainly violated by china and we are seeing the dis, uh, disengage uh, we are seeing the disengagement exercise which has been not complete till now and the situation across this lac it is also not good okay so this situation now we are facing in this lac region which is mainly because of violation of agreements by china so this is the thing which mainly said by our excellent affairs minister in this recent quad ministerial meet so but what china has been doing at lac it is not mere a disregard it is a violation of international laws as part of a larger game of chinese expansion so china which is very much famous for the aggressive expansionist policy right so china which is sharing the boundary with number of countries so where it is sharing boundary okay either it may be continental boundary either it may be a maritime boundary so with all these countries china is have some issues okay so here this is the one important thing that we can say here so because of chinese expansionist policy so it is going for violation of some international laws also so we are going to see those as well so if you are talking about breach of law so india and china they have some agreements okay regarding this lac engagement okay we have some bilateral engage bilateral agreements so bilateral agreements means so these are the agreements which are mainly accepted by these two countries and these agreements were already signed over the years and if you are talking about some important theme regarding this agreements it is like we should not use and we should not use any force or we should not cause any threat okay so what are the agreements which are mainly signed between india and china those are bilateral agreements so important tenet that is a the theme of these agreements is should not use a force and should not threat the other country right so if you are talking about this first agreement that is 1993 agreement which is mainly signed between india and china so this agreement which mainly provides neither side shall use or threaten or to use force against other by any means okay so this 1993 agreement says that we should not use any force or we should not threaten any other country okay so this is according to this 1993 agreement but here china which is mainly threatening india okay and whichever the things or if there is any dis, uh, any difference that is seen across this lac region so those issues they need to be resolved through peaceful and as well as friendly consultations so this is the thing which is mainly said in this 1993 agreement and next one is 1996 agreement so in this 1996 agreement so article 1 which mainly says regarding confidential building measures so confidential building measures between the two sides they need to prohibit the use of military capability against the other side so they should not use military against the other country right but here we are seeing there is a clear violation of this 1996 that is confidential building measures between india and china and even even article 1 of uh, article 1 and article 8 of 2005 and 2013 agreements they also says about this thing that is they should not threaten by using the military capability and next one is even uh, even article 2 sub class 4 of united nation charter which is also violated here so what is the example how can i say that these agreements had been violated so already you know that in recently 2020 on june 15th so there was some uh, some fight uh, some uh, some scuffle that held between this india and as well as chinese military at galwan and that led to the galwan valley incident and in this incident about 20 indian soldiers they lost their life okay so this chinese aggression not only violates this bilateral treaties and even united nation charter had been violated by china and china uh, and china also did many transgressions okay not only in this uh, places but many places they also came up with uh, several rounds of uh, transgressions actually these transgressions which are mainly backed by china by other developments uh, which are mainly came up by china like new border law that came up recently okay and also china took several steps to rename the many areas or the many places in this arunachal pradesh and it mainly want to set up boundary markers and it also came up with development of number of villages across this india china border as well okay so in this way these are the some important actions that says that china it is not only violating the bilateral agreements even united nation charter and if you are talking about this line of actual control transgressions 
and also if you are talking about this new border law which mainly violates article 9 of 2005 agreement okay so this agreement which mainly talks about each country which need to strictly respect and observe this lac okay and what happened uh, so in this context the st still the permanent solution which is uh, which is came up to tell this uh, lac region so they need to strictly respect and as well as they need to observe this lac region so this is the thing which mainly said in this 2005 agreement so because of this new border law and as well as lac transgressions that led to the violation of this uh, 2005 agreement okay and even there are some many reports which mainly says that there is a huge military build up okay there is a huge military build up by china okay across this lac region as well so this is one more important thing and even even what happened in at this lac region 1993 and as well as 1996 agreements they had been violated here okay so this is the thing which mainly is said because there are increasing of uh, military forces that is seen across this border and even there is a increasing of uh, combat tanks, vehicles, missiles, mortars and big mortar guns which are mainly seen here. So because of this it is clearly violated in this 1993 and as well as 1996 agreements. So not only China which is mainly violated in this uh, bilateral agreements between India and China but even it is also weaponizing the global law. For example, we have UNCLOS, okay, United Nations Convention on Law of Seas, which mainly talks about, so for example, if you see this is the country, so which is mainly having this uh, maritime boundary, it is sharing with this maritime boundary, so till how many miles it will come under nautical miles, okay, till how many miles it comes under inter internal waters, territorial waters, okay, so this is the thing which mainly said in this UNCLOS. So what happened? Here China which is having dispute not only the continental boundary but even maritime boundary. For example, it is having some uh, issue regarding this uh, uh, South China Sea. It is came up with this artificial islands. So China started building up of artificial islands and it is claiming entire South China Sea which is an integral part of this uh, China. But what happened there are a number of other countries also sharing boundary right in this uh, South China Sea. So one such a dispute which mainly entered in, into the, this uh, inter international arbitration and the international arbitration which mainly gave a uh, verdict, okay, final judgment which is favored to that of Philippines. So because of this here China de-announced denounced this uh, ruling in ruling of this international arbitration in 2016. So this is the one important issue. So here it also denounced this UNCLOS as well. And next one is China claims to be the defender of the international trade law regime at WTO. So WTO also it is mainly defender of this international trade because what are the clause of this WTO that is World Trade Organization which is also violated by the China because it is mainly hiding what are the subsidies they are mainly providing and even they are following the policy of mercantilism okay and the what are the policies of this china they are non transparent and they are also coming coming with a complex uh, eco uh, economic system here so because of this what happened chinese also they are the defender they also claims to be the defender of this international trade law regime of wto okay because china it is also providing some uh, illegal subsidies and it is also manipulating currency okay and even it is stealing intellectual properties and even it forcing the companies to transfer the technologies as well. So these are the some important things which are mainly violating this trade law regime of WTO as well. So in this way it is also violating this WTO regime. And next one is Chinese has a long history of gaming the international legal system. Okay. And they will mainly come into the legally binding nuclear proliferation treaty. Okay. Actually they, this uh, China is a signatory to this uh, okay nuclear proliferation treaty so under this nuclear proliferation treaty as a member so it is mainly violating some uh, some important uh, provisions of this npt because it is secretly giving some uh, or providing some nuclear technology to its allies so because of this it is also violating even npt nuclear proliferation treaty so in this way here china is mainly coming up with a weaponizing of international law as well so because of this it is mainly increase in the atmosphere of distrust and now what is the way forward so new delhi now it should develop a strategy okay strategy by ethical warfare by mainstreaming this international law into its diplomatic toolkit 
and we need to respond to this uh, Beijing challenge. So what are the challenges that are posed by this China? So now we need to come up with a strategical, okay, strategical ethical lawfare such that we need to maintain the international laws and we need to respond to the what are the challenges to mainly posed by China. And next one is we need to also go for an equivocal proclamation should be made at all international platforms that India reserves the right to act in self-defense under Article 51 of United Nations Charter to counter any misadventure. Okay, so even we need to go for right to act uh, in self-defense. Okay, so that is the thing which mainly said in the Article 51 of United Nations Charter, and we need to use that article and we can counter this Chinese myth as misadventure. And this one is we need to enact a national security law, and this need to impose restrictions and as well as sanctions on various kinds like trade, economic, military on those countries whom India which is mainly sharing the land boundary. So this is the thing that is a way forward and I hope it is very much clear. Now let us try to see next topic is regarding questions on MG Narega budget estimation. So it is mainly talking about MG Narega. So MG Narega stands for Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. So already I think you know about some basic facts regarding this MG Narega because number of times we discussed about this topic in our lectures, right? So I'm not going into basics. Let's directly enter into the topic. And what is the context here is there is a budget allocation which is mainly decreased for this year and for this MG Narega despite of increasing the demand. So this is the one cause of concern. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So if you see, this article which is mainly focusing on MG Narega budgetary estimation. So if you see this image, you will be seeing actual, okay, in 2021, the budget allocation is this much and the budget estimate in 2021-22 here is 73,000 crore and actually revised, revised means what, am, what about the amount that actually spent. So budgetary means in budget. So what are the estimate they came up that is called as budget estimate and here revised estimate is what about the amount that actually spent. So the budget estimate it was like 73,000 and they spent about 98,000 crore rupees and this year estimated is like 73,000 that means whatever the revised estimates that is about 98,000 and now it is like 25.5 percentage decrease when we are comparing with the last year okay so this is the one cause of concern and you can draw this type of uh, graphs even in your exams so this will be like a very very good presentation and what are the data you have to see you have to give the authenticated data so actually it is a data which i got from the budget 2022-23 okay so if you're talking about introduction it mainly says that so this year this year for this engineer Rega, mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act for the financial year 2022 to 2023, so budget has been less allocated for this MG Narega. So because of this number of organizations uh, per se, All India Kisan Sabha and NG, uh, Narega Sangraha Morcha, they mainly raised some concerns regarding inadequacy of amount. So even grassroots activists, academic, academicians, they are mainly demanding that there is a need of high budgetary allocations for this MG Narega scheme. So because whatever the amount that is mainly allocated for this MG Narega, it is not at all sufficient because already there are high dues for the material and as well as high dues of uh, payment, payment it is also seen. So even though there is high demand for this MG Narega, so the budget allocations are very, very less. That is 25% less than compared to the revised estimates. And next one is the initial allocations in past two financial years has been just about half of what was recommended by the groups uh, like People's Action for Employment Guarantee that is PAEG and NSM. So what is the amount that is demanded by this uh, People's Action for Employment Guarantee and NSM which is very much less. Okay, what are the amount that is uh, that is uh, given that is very very much less than recommended by this People's Action for Employment Guarantee and as NSM. So what happened because of this less budget allocations, we can see there will be the shortage of funds. Okay, shortage of funds and even states will face some deficit as well. And there will be long delay of payments for both the workers and as well as for the material as well. So this is the thing which already faced by the states from last six months onwards. So here if you're talking about 
the budgetary calculations regarding the scheme especially regarding this mg narega which mainly focused on the two things and you have to remember these two things first one is projected person days okay projected person days so this is the first one and second one is based on wage rate okay projected person days second one is wage rate so if we talk about this projected persons days that means the total days of work okay that means the total days of work anticipated for year it is a total days of work which mainly anticipated for year so it mainly comes under this projected person days and who will going to decide that that will be decided by district program coordinator district program coordinator is responsible for calculating and submitting it to the state which in turn collates the entire state's projected demand and also submits it to the centers for approval so here district program coordinator he is mainly responsible for calculating this projected person days and later on he will be giving that information to the state okay and that will be submitted to center for approval second one is wage rate so official mg narega wages also contribute to keeping the budget low okay actually what is a mandate mandate is clear that so whenever the wages which are given under this mg narega that cannot be lower than the minimum wage minimum wage okay in each is each state so this minimum wage it is different from one state to another state so based on that minimum wage of that so and so state so whatever the salary or whatever the uh, cost that is given uh, whatever the wage that is given so that should not be below the minimum wage of that state but what happened here so normally the wages which is given under this mg narega they are very very low so because of this we can say here the fundamental rights of this mg narega workers is violated here and if you are talking about data so according to an expert committee under the chairmanship of anu anup satpati he mainly said that the national minimum wage here it is like rupees 375 per day okay as of july 2018 but if you see according to this peg it mainly says that the minimum wage it is like rupees 269 per day and if you are talking about how much amount that is given under this mg narega that is 209 rupees so it is very very less than compared to of this national minimum wage so what is the way forward way forward here is we need to increase the budgetary allocation for this mg narega and we need to increase the wages that should be given uh, for this mg narega workers and it should not be below this minimum wage and even as you all know mg narega which mainly treats employment guarantee as a legal right and it mainly said that in the rural areas rural households they can demand work for 100 days every year so because of this we need to fulfill the fulfill the aim of why we came up with this mg narega and we need to replenish the supplementary grants for this mg narega such that such that it will be helpful for for mainly based on the actual work which is mainly demanded in each state okay so this is the gist of this topic and now let us try to see next topic is regarding fundamental duties so where you can see this fundamental duties if you have gone through or completed your static portion of polity you might be knowing about this fundamental duties and even in your school days also you might read about this fundamental duties actually these fundamental duties are present in the part 4a of our indian constitution and article 51a which mainly talks about this uh, fundamental duties okay so this fundamental duties are present in for part 4a of indian constitution and they are present in article 51a of indian constitution actually these fundamental duties are not present in our original constitution but they are added through some constitution amendment act so let me know which constitution amendment act that led to addition of this fundamental duties and based on which committee recommendations so this is a question for you people and let us go into this topic so why this is in news supreme court asked the union and state governments to respond to petition to enforce fundamental duties of citizens and including patriotism unity of the nation to the comprehensive and well defined laws so supreme court so actually one petition which mainly filed in the supreme court that there should be the implementation of fundamental duties and this fundamental duties which also include patriotism and as well as unity of nation and we can we can say that this to be compulsorily imposed by introduction of any law or well defined laws so because of the supreme court asked union and as well as state governments 
to respond to this petition okay which is asking regarding the imposition of this fundamental duties or we can lay we can say like enforce of this fundamental duties so if we're talking about details it mainly says that so the need to enforce the need to enforce fundamental duties arises from a new legal trend of protest by protesters so what happened throughout the country we are seeing that there are some protests which are mainly done by the people mainly to protect their fundamental rights for example article 19 sub class 1a which mainly talks about freedom of speech and expression and they are mainly blocking the roads and as well as rail routes okay mainly to meet their demands so because of this one petition which is mainly filed that yes people they are protesting for the rights but what about the duties okay so we need to enforce this fundamental duties also so because of this here supreme court asked the center and as well state government regarding this enforcement of fundamental duties so now i want to give you a main question so many students are asking that please give me the main questions as well so in this today's lecture i gave you two main questions okay if you want you can practice those uh, questions and give me your opinion on that questions as well okay so the first question is regarding the moral value of fundamental duties would not be the smoother rights but to establish a democratic balance by making the people conscious of their duties equally as they are conscious of their rights so it is it is mainly based on fundamental rights and fundamental duties so most of the time we can we know about our fundamental rights and most of the time we will forget our fundamental duties okay so the moral value of fundamental duties would not be the smoother to rights but we need to establish a democratic balance okay we need a, we need a proper balance between these fundamental rights and as well as fundamental duties and the key word here is discuss okay so it is the main question for today and try to not write answer and you can give me your answer even the comment box as well okay so now let us try to see some facts regarding this fundamental duties so we are having 11 fundamental duties in our indian constitution which mainly comes under part 4a and article 51a which mainly talks about this fundamental duties so first one is abide by the constitution national flag and anthem and uphold sovereignty unity and integrity of india promote harmony and brotherhood protect and improve nat uh, natural environment safeguard public property and abjugate uh, violence provide opportunities for education and next one is cherish the ideals of a freedom struggle define the country and render national service and next one is uh, preserve rich heritage of composite culture develop scientific temper and humanism and next one is strive for excellence so you can get a prelims question like so identify which are the following duties so for sure in this year prelims you will be getting question from fundamental rights fundamental duties and national dpsp for sure so you have to prepare this topic for sure and next topic it is about india and france discuss afghanistan ukraine crisis and this topic is very important actually from your international relations so now let us try to talk about this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that our external affairs minister he had wide ranging and productive talks with french counterpart so our external affairs minister had a talk with french okay and they discussed several issues like regional issues and as well as global issues and even they talked about india european union relationship and also they exchanged some ideas regarding afghanistan and iran nuclear deal and even today's uh, newspaper which mainly talked about iran's nuclear deal already we discussed that topic and after everything is done after every development is done we will be getting editorials so at that time you are going to discuss that okay next one is ukraine crisis so these are the some important regional issues and as well as global issues they mainly had some discussions so if you are talking about details it mainly says that so there is a some shared commitment okay shared commitment to the principles of multilateralism and even they talked about rules based order and from the both the sides from indian side and as well as france side they agreed to coordinate in the security council this united nations security council okay and next one is the ministry of external affairs also said that the two ministers they also discussed some key regional and as well as global issues and they talked about india european union partnership and they came up with the priorities of the french presidency in the european union council and even they talked about the cooperation in this indo pacific region so actually the shift which is happening from west towards east okay 
So earlier the Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, it was a like a like important and rich thing. But now it is mainly the it is a mainly moving okay power mainly shifting from this west towards east that is mainly seen so towards Indian Ocean that is Indo Pacific region so from Atlantic region so in this Atlantic Ocean we will be having here North America South Af South America Europe is present here so now the shifting of power that is seen from this west towards east towards this Indo Pacific region which is mainly seen okay so already we discussed this topic number of times and next one is the two ministers also agreed to join a launch. Indo French call okay, they want to come up with Indo Pacific Parks Partnership as well okay, and they want to mainly maintain this Indo Pacific region okay, they want to increase the capacities in this Indo Pacific region and they want to focus on sustainable development and even to protect these areas and they want to ensure freedom of navigation in this area like that okay, so this is about this topic. And actually they agreed to even continue or to enhance their cooperation and they are going to come up with joint declaration especially in areas of sports and even they want to facilitate people to people contacts as well. And they also talked about the situation in Afghanistan, even Ukraine crisis and even they talked about Iran's nuclear deal as well. So these are some important things that you need to remember and now let us try to see the map. So here we have France. So whenever any country which is, which is seen in the news, you have to open the atlas and you have to see which are the countries sharing the boundary such that you will be having some idea regarding the world map as well. So here country like Spain, here Italy, Switzerland, Luxembourg, here Germany and Belgium. So these are the countries which are sharing boundary with France. And here we have Mediterranean Sea, here we have Bay of Biscay, okay this is the Bay of Biscay. And here we have English channel, English channel also it is very very important channel and here we have North Sea. So these are the nearby water bodies. And now let us try to see next question, uh, next uh, topic it is regarding union budget. Union budget will help in implementing national education policy. So this is the statement which is given by our Modi sir. So I want to give you a small homework. So please do revise regarding this national education policy some important provisions. Okay, so this will be very very important from your prelims and even in your means. So now let us try to see the context. So context says that Prime Minister said that union budget for 2022-23 will be of great help. Okay, so this budget, so what are the budget estimations that are mainly made in this education? So these are very much helpful for implementing of this national education policy. So we already discussed about this education on budget session very very well. So please watch that video that will be very very helpful. Right, our Prime Minister said that what are the budget estimates in this 2022 to 2023 which are made in this education sector. That, so that will be very much helpful even for implementing, implementing in this national education policy on the ground. And they also talked about to set up national digital university. Okay, they mainly talk about to set up national digital university which mainly helps to solve the problems of storage of seats okay short it mainly talks about the shortage of seats in education institutions so what happened in many institutions now we are facing problem like shortage of seats so here whenever we are having this national digital university so whatever the problem that we are facing regarding the shortage of seats that can be mainly addressed so this is the thing which mainly said by our prime minister so if you see some details it mainly says that so he is mainly addressing a webinar regarding the positive impact of union budget so in this context, our Prime Minister, he mainly focused on five important aspects. Okay, five important aspects which are related to education. First one is universalization of quality education. They talked about skill development and urban planning and internationalization and even animation, visual effects, gaming, comic. So these are the five important aspects of education that are mainly seen in our budget as well. Okay, and he mainly focused on digital connectivity. So whatever the digital divide that we are experienced in this COVID-19 period that is regarding uh, regarding the gap between the urban areas and as well as rural areas. So this will be mainly shrinking in India. So this is a thing which mainly said by our Prime Minister. And apart from that he also focused on digital university. So he said that this digital university is very very helpful especially to innovate. Okay. Especially to innovate and even it will be very much helpful addressing the problem of seat shortage in universities as well and even our prime minister said that this year budget is very very helpful 
to implement this national education policy as well and now let us try to see the second question second question that is question 2 discuss the opportunities offered by the establishment of nas national digital university especially when covid 19 pandemic has disturbed the functioning of whole education system so here you need to write about what will be the advantages of this digital university and even you can write about what are the disadvantages and even you can give me the way forward so this is a touch of a question answer you have to write so the here keyword is discuss discuss the opportunities in introduction you can write about digital university so what is this digital university so what is this year budget which may it said about this digital university like that and you can write about what are the opportunities means what will be the advantages which are mainly provided by the establishment so the discuss here the word is discuss right so here you will be having a very much choices so you can write anything you want and now let us try to see the background regarding this topic actually what happened central government want to set up a uh, digital university and it is having some impact like world class quality education they want to provide and even government want to promote online learning in the different Indian languages. So actually what happened in the yesterday's lecture, yesterday's February 21st, it is International Mother Language Day. So we discussed one article, in the uh, that is the first article regarding this International Mother Language Day. And we saw that uh, the one important survey which mainly done about 84,000 students were surveyed and about 40, more than 40% of students they said that they want to have this engineering classes in their mother tongue. Right, and even we are seeing that there are a number of changes which are mainly done, and there is a collaboration such that they are mainly translating the books into the regional languages as well. So here in this context, you need to have an uh, have an idea regarding so classical language, official language as well. So you might be getting a question regarding official languages. Okay, so let me know how many official languages are present in India, and you have to also know about classical languages because in earlier prelims there was one question regarding the classical languages as well. So whenever we are having this digital university, that will be very much helpful to address learning loss due to school closure and even government will also expand one class one TV channel. So this is the initiative under this PME Vidya scheme and even they also proposed a digital university and also they came with expanded TV education program that will be very much helpful for modern and as well as the practical blueprint of steering India in this Amrit Kaur. So this budget which mainly said that this is Amrit Kaur, right? So in this uh, year budget, they mainly talk about one class, one TV channel and they want to extend this. And they also talked about this digital university as well. So these are the some important highlights that you need to remember regarding this topic. And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding Corbevax. So Corbevax, it is a COVID-19 vaccine. And why it is in use? Because here recently DCG, either is Drug Control, Indi uh, Drug Control General of India, which gave emergency use authorization for this Corbivax. And now this Corbivax can be given for the children who are between the age of 12 to 18 years. So this is the context. And now let us try to see some important details of this Corbivax. So actually this vaccine will be administered by IM, that is that will be given to muzzle actually. Okay, that is IM root. So if you're talking about injections, they will be given in different ways like IV will be there. You might be knowing it about IV, right? So one saline, if you're taking any saline that will be connected to your intravenous thing and you will be having uh, subcutaneous and you will be having like uh, intramuscular. So the injections will be like a number of types. So, so based on the type of uh, medicine that is present, like water based or oil based, so based on that, uh, different types of uh, injections or mode of administration will be very much different. So actually this vaccine is just like intramuscular route and it can be given in two doses and the gap between the one dose and next dose here it is like 28 days and this vaccine can be stored in a temperature between 2 to 8 degrees that can be stored in our refrigerators as well and uh, the first dose will be given like 0.5 ml okay and 5 ml vial and 10 ml vial packs are available okay so the dose will be like 0.5 ml that will be given so we're talking about some facts regarding this Corbivax so it is a recombinant protein subunit vaccine so it is a protein subunit vaccine so it is mainly made up of some specific parts of the SARS coronavirus spike proteins okay so what are the proteins are present in this spike protein for example if you see this is the virus so this is a spike protein right so in this spike protein, so what are the proteins are present that are mainly taken and this is used for the preparation of this vaccine. 
so whenever this protein which is entering into our body our body immune system will be recognizing that some other antibody which mainly came into uh, some other antigen which mainly came into our body and our body starts producing antibodies against that the antibodies are y shaped in the things and after developing of this antibodies in our body if at all we really attack with this virus means so already the circulating antibodies that will be presenting in our blood and they will be easily identifying that antigen and that will be helpful for come out of the risk of getting this infection of this covid 19 so this is the about this topic and now let's try to see today's questions so first question is regarding soil erosion soil erosion is one of the major reason for depleting forest cover in india Yes, soil erosion is one of the important reasons. So, consider the following statements. So, first one is excessive soil erosion of bottom soil reduces both fertility and water holding capacity. Actually, without erosion of the top soil, how this bottom soil will be eroded, right? So, the maximum amount, the excessive erosion that is seen on the top soil but not the bottom soil. So, this statement is absolutely incorrect. So, you can eliminate this first statement and as well as you can eliminate this third option. And this one is major part of Indian forest cover undergone heavy soil erosion amounting to almost 30 percentage but it is it, but it is less than 3 percentage. So you can also eliminate this statement. So correct option will be 4 none. And next question here is which of the following are artificial methods of forest regeneration that is Taungya system. So this Taungya system which is mainly followed by the forest dwellers. So in this forest dwellers they will be going for uh, going for agriculture especially in whenever the forest it is in nascent period that means whenever uh, we are going for the planting or whenever the forest it is at the first initial stages so in that stages whenever the forest dwellers they are going and uh, uh, going and they are going for any agriculture there that is called as the Songya system yes the Songya system it is one of the artificial method because forest dwellers are going there and next one is uh, silviculture so silviculture it is a system where we can go for study of forest actually Silvi, silvilogy it is nothing but the study of forest so here we are going for the development of forest and even we are going for analysis and here we are going for the different types of studies so this is also an artificial method so these both both are the correct answer so correct option here is three both and now let us try to see today's questions so before seeing this today's questions i want to make a small announcement on this platform so if you want to clear upsc so I will strongly suggest you to join this prelims test series and as well as mains answer writing course that we are providing in this Rathod's IS Academy. So prelims it is very very near it is just three months. So I am thinking to come up with a one video regarding so how to prepare for this prelims within this three months and which are the core areas that you have to study based on my analysis. So I want to come up with this a video that will be posted maybe by today or tomorrow for sure. And I also want to come up with a strategy for the CSAT as well. Okay, that will be, those are the two videos that will be very useful. And please wait for those videos. I'm thinking uh, it will be released by today or tomorrow. Okay, so in this Prelims test series, we are providing like 30 tests which includes both GS and as well as CSAT. So this will be absolutely beneficial to understand how questions will be appeared. Okay, because we are also focusing on current affairs. And next topic is regarding this mains answer rating course. So in this uh, mains answer writing course, we are exclusively focusing on your mains answer writing skills. So I think you may or might not be knowing like, uh, so this mains it is one of the deciding factor whether your name will be there in your final list or not. If you are a serious aspirant, you need to focus on this mains answer writing whenever you are start, whenever you started your preparation. Okay, even though if you are the fresher or even though if you have gave your attempts, so you need to focus on this mains. Okay. And in this course, I will assure you that within one year, you are going to write answer regarding each and every topic that is present in your syllabus. And here we are focusing on how to improve your answer writing skills. We are, will be giving you weekly targets. Or based on that weekly target, daily one question will be given to you and you have you are supposed to write the answers and you have to send back so that there will be proper evaluation and even there will be one-to-one -one mentorship as well. And we also launched an entire foundational course for UPSC CSE 2023. So in this course, we are providing like more than 700 hours of video lectures. This will be absolutely useful. And you are covering each and every topic in your syllabus with conceptual clarity. And the cost is very, very affordable. So if you want to take this entire foundational course, we will be giving you prelims, test series and as well as mains answer writing course for free as well. 
and the next one is if you want to take individual courses like if you are working in economy or if you are working in history or if you are working in geography or ethics like that you can take the individual uh, modules as well so individual modules are also available okay so the details of this course are given in the description box you can visit our website rathos is academy there you can get the details of our courses and if you want to watch the demo videos you can also watch demo videos and you can watch three demo videos in each and every module without paying a single penny as well right and now let us try to see the today's questions so first question is regarding coral bleaching so this topic is very important from both your geography and environment point of view so please try to read the statements and give me the correct option and next topic it is about bio safety protocol so this type of uh, questions that you can see in here prelims for sure so please try to give me the correct answer in the comment box so there is no negative marking you can give your answers that will be very much helpful for your motivation itself so by this i'm concluding i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathors is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos thank you so much